may not hug me. <laughs> All right. Give it to me raw. Give it to me raw and quickly. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> All right, Ramsey. Yeah, man. Well, that, that was God, that was. Give me the meats and give it to me raw. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined it. Oh, Fat hobbitses. Potatoes. <laughs> What does taste for hobbits? <laughs> Wrong show, guys. Wrong show. That's good. <laughs> that was actually really good. Thank you. I could do weird voices. All right. What's up, Hot D fans? What's going on? <laughs> We're here to talk uh, about episode three of season two of the House of the Dragons. And I'm joined, as always, by a fantastic panel of nerds. Dutch Butters is here. What's up? I'm here. Loving some hot D. Hot D. There's, there's Love the hot D. There's some hot D in this episode. I can't believe I'm saying that. You know what I mean? It's really weird. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> there was some hot D goblin <laughs> going on in this episode. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Wild. Yeah. Uh, Jude is also here. Well, I'm, I've am i been a fan of hot D since way back. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Kadish producing the show. Yep. Uh, when that scene popped up on... <laughs> On the show, right. I was literally like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like, they went there. He they clutched went there. his pearls. <laughs> 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 I, I, I my brother for a second. He literally, did, literally did, went, "Oh my god!" <laughs> did, did, did he look at you and go, "Hock to it"? A little hock to it, actually. No. <laughs> and the sea snurpit himself. Snurp it? Snurp it. The key no, the sea Charles not. is here. <laughs> just, just go there. Yeah, yeah. Charles is here. Hockey What's up, bro? Fan. Needs a, a lower third. See, uh, snurp it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. All right. <laughs> Thanks all for being here. This is going to be fun. Uh, this is a good episode. I was actually having a really good time with this one. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, the opening scene is actually something that I, as a normie, don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. So, um, we've got these two rival people on mm. some kind of a land dispute, okay. and they're a warring faction family who just don't like each other, but they're just parked right next to each other's asses. Uh, Brackens and Blackwood. Yes. Right? Yes. Blackwood. Yeah. So, so they've just been feuding for thousands, generations. Thousands is there, there, so there's like the Hatfields and McCoys. Yes. Yeah. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So is that really, is that all you need to know about the scene? Yeah. Is pretty there much. anything pretty deep, much. deeper? Pretty okay. Much. I think they're just, they're just setting up that the, the, the the houses are dividing. Mm -hmm. well, well, and there's rivals out there. There's, that are, a, there's there's skirmishes that are forcing uh, the blacks and the greens to be like, you know what? Mm -hmm. If we got them on our team, they have a bunch of fucking armies we yeah. could use. Yeah, and they and actually, these, really the, these two houses are in the like major houses in the Riverlands, mm -hmm. and um, they they play a important role to come in the Civil War. So like, mm -hmm. he, and even in in the previous season. We had a, a situation where yes. one of them killed the other, like like one guy killed one dude from the other side while they were like at the, at their, at, I believe. At the throne. Uh, no, I, I believe it was like at their liege lord's castle or something like that. So it was when, it was when Rhaenyra, when Rhaenyra was meeting suitors. Yeah. And then she met like this one person from Blackwood. He was like a boy. And this actually will tie into something else that I'll get into. But we saw a little tease of just the black, Bracken Blackwood feud huh. there. Okay. Where, this Blackwood kid basically killed this full-grown teen mm. from the Bracken side. Can we talk about just how unusually pretty this dude is? Yeah, he's very pretty. <laughs> Can I just mention that real very, quick? Very feminine. I was like very looking pretty. at this, and I'm like, is that a is it's like a girl? It's what? called hot. <laughs> hey, hot tea for a reason. <laughs> Come on. You should see his dick. <laughs> well, we didn't get a chance to. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> but one so we have a we have a hard cut. These two are arguing. It, it looks like a bunch of teenagers, honestly, just yeah. picking a fight with each other. And it's like your dad says it sucks. And he's like, no, my dad could kick your dad's ass. And then it starts this whole giant thing. And it's called called the the burning of the the, the battle of the burning mill. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And uh, that was actually like a, a big battle in the books yeah. that um, they just kind of skipped over in the show. They're just like, we don't have the budget for, for this one. But how they did skipped it over. actually, I liked how they did it though. <laughs> I actually liked, because it was like, it looked like just the typical black and black and feud, Blackwood feud, black and feud, Blackwood feud. Yeah. And then it just became something entirely bigger. And we see like, oh, wow. Yeah, they zoom out. I love the hard cut on this one because they cut to them like they're feuding and then it hard cuts to just bodies laying everywhere. Dude's got a sword in his neck. He's got a sword yeah. in his neck. He's dead. <laughs> and there's just thousands of people laying on the grounds out there just leaking fluids into the river. <laughs> it's insane. I the thing I don't necessarily think we needed to see this this big, massive, overblown battle between mm -hmm. these two. Right. I think we get the idea. Yeah, the message was... Yeah, the message is, yeah. hey, these two don't like each other, and they're fighting for the blacks and the greens, and now here's thousands of dead people. So. We're going to introduce it just to... 
be like, okay, it's over now. Hostility. <laughs> Did you not like that they cut? You wanted to see the fight? No, I didn't really need it at all. I, oh. I think that the initial, like, my dad's bigger than your dad fight was enough. Mm. And then I feel like off screen, it could have been like, oh, yeah, they're killing each other. We better get down there. Or this I, is happening right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I took it as a way for them to tell us in the show that the the, the houses are all splintering in the yeah. room. And this is going to be happening more and more. So they need to get their armies reined in and, mm. and under control. Oh. And even more so, so, a big thing, yeah. too, is that a lot of times when you have a strong great house, mm -hmm. a lot of times the family, their vassals will fall in line. And because Grover Tully, this actually came up, Grover Tully is kind of old and doddering. Basically, the houses are not falling in line. So mm -hmm. now it's like, okay. It's kind of like the Democratic Party right now. Yeah, there you go. Oh. <laughs> hey, man. It's not wrong. <laughs> Uh, but um, what, one of the interesting things about this is that this battle actually happens in, in the books. It happens after uh, Damon takes over Heron Hall. Uh, so, like, there, there's a little bit of, like, out-of-whack chronology oh, going on Oh, that's interesting. Here. It did, uh, yeah. Does that make a difference to the, to the overall story that this is kind of, like, slightly out of sequence? Well, or no? Not, not to me. <laughs> <laughs> not entirely. No? Okay. Yeah. All right, the, uh, the next scene um, I really want to talk about because Rhaenyra says something very interesting. So we get the, the burial of the, the twin knights, um, Eric, Eric and Arik. And Arik um, at Dragonstone. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't ship his body back to King's Landing or anything like that. Buried no, him with his brother. They buried them together. But they also didn't exactly give them like a, like a big hoorah. No. Like they literally just threw him in a ditch on the side of the, the mountain. Like, I was surprised by that. I thought this guy was going to get, like, the knight's honor of, like, being on a boat and pushed out into the sea and shot with a flaming arrow and that whole day. No, they were just like, you know what I think? They usually have the dragons just burn them. Or that. Yeah, They probably still couldn't tell who was who. Is that? Really? Is that what you're thinking? Whoa. Is that why they're like, okay, we can't give both of them an honorable burial, but we also can't give one the wrong burial? So they're just like... Just throw them in a ditch. That makes sense. Pretty much. It'll be fine. Well, they use the they use the burial as a backdrop for the dialogue between the queen and yeah. Denise and Rhaenyra. Yeah. yeah. So I so. th this this scene, uh Rhaenyra says something that I thought was really cool and interesting. She she said, I cannot fault him for honoring his oath. So sure. she's talking about the guy who tried to assassinate her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Yeah, it's cool, man. He I was guess. told what to do. Yeah. He's doing He's a man he, of honor. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike Unlike. Kristen Cole. <laughs> oh, Kristen Cole. <Con> <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll get to him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you guys have anything else to add about this little funeral sequence? Um, uh, I, f I feel like we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of this episode like halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> the raw meat. Um, <laughs> so basically, Rhaenyra is still... Look, so much set up. There's, so, there's two... Just, yeah. Well, basically... I want to see her be more proactive and we're still, that's still a problem. But mm. anyway, that's all I got to say. There's more to get into. I yeah, know but, I said uh, this last episode. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. I feel like this is the episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that all of the, I feel like all of the puzzle pieces needed to fall in place in order for that change to be um, realistic. Mm -hmm. I, I do feel like Ray, uh, Rhaenyra uh, was, she was trained at her father's side and she is not quick to be like blood and fire right. like Aegon is. Aegon's a fucking idiot. Yeah, yes. So Rhaenyra has to be different. Rhaenyra has to be more calculated. And how can we avoid bloodshed and thinking of the people? And then something has to happen for her to become more ruthless. And this, what happens at the end, is I think what does it because she has proof that she is the rightful heir. The rightful. She's but, she's but, always she's she's. The character who is trying to be more reined in, she doesn't want to do, she, just, she doesn't want the realm to be ashes, to, ashes and destroyed. Yeah. And that, she, she's, she's trying to figure out how to get this all done and get her, get her thrown back without having to kill her family. But, yeah. but also, also, yeah, like thing. the big thing about Rhaenyra is that she understands the consequences of right. Targaryen turning against Targaryen. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, dragons battling each yeah. other and family killing each other. Like she understands all this and she's been, resisting it for as long as she can. Yeah. And kinslaying is the worst thing that you could do in this world. Like, mm -hmm. like kinslaying is like, it, it's, it's worse than like regular ass murder. It's like you're killing your own bloodline. That mm -hmm. is the worst fucking thing. That is the it's, worst it's, thing you could possibly commit. Yeah. It's up there with breaking guest right in many ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for her to 
willingly go into that. Like and, she, and, she has to know what she's doing and, in order to get And there. I understand that, but I feel that, and this is not, I don't want to be that guy who's like harping on the Be that book, guy. But I feel that the show is too often clearly making her the protagonist. And it shouldn't be like, obviously she's the main character. We get that. But it's just like making her the protagonist at the expense of the other side. Where it's like, okay, they're they're clearly doing a crappy thing, but it's just like mm. they're taking away some of the more interesting qualities that they started developing in season one in order to make her look like she's the good one. Like for instance, like we were talking about what happened. Well, I thought, hold on a second, because didn't you say, or, or Jude said last week that the Greens were looking too sympathetic? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they just lost lost the air, so it made sense at that time. But, no, what I said was, I think that the showrunners are green. Right. And <laughs> they are, like, all of this stuff with Alicent thinking that Aegon is what Viserys wanted, none of that shit happened in the no, book. No, it didn't. Right. No. Alicent had been plotting this hmm. from day fucking one. She and, had a yeah. son. And she was like, he's getting on that throne. And, and so basically, my issue is that one of the things with Rhaenyra, and I thought this is an interesting flaw that you could have really explored is it's not that at least in the beginning not that she's like evil or something or whatnot it's just that she's very self-involved and entitled and she doesn't really think about the consequences of her actions like for instance she basically insults all the people who are her suitors mm -hmm. and then ends up with one person ends up dead because yeah. it reignites an old feud or for instance the power imbalance between her and Kristen cole she just sleeps with him uses him as a toy and not thinking to herself that he basically is falling in love with her and she basically could do what she wants because she's the princess. And he's just a, not even, even though he's a knight, he's a Kingsguard, he's not like, he doesn't come from a great house. He doesn't come from even a rich house. He comes from, he's, his dad was like a steward for House Dondarrion. And so not thinking of the consequences of her actions there or even the fact that could you at least not sleep with like somebody from Lease? Or somebody from the free city, so your kids look like Targaryens. Because <laughs> okay. all this stuff wouldn't have happened had she thought this through. So it's like, let's continue to see that, where it's like, okay, yes, she is the rightful heir, but these flaws are what are going to do her in. Well, what, one of the things I really like about George R. R. Martin's writing is that, you know, at some point, it's very clear, like, who the good guys are, who the bad guys are, and then those lines start to get blurred, like, with the original mm -hmm. yes. Game of Thrones. The Starks were the straight up good guys. Lannisters were straight up bad guys. But as it goes on, it's like uh, the Lannisters, yeah, they're bad, but there's like some good qualities to them. And the Starks are good, but there's some bad qualities to them. And so like that, that's one of the beauties of, of this series is that the characters are complex. They're, they're not, it's not straight up like yes. this person's always in the right and this person's always in the wrong. Yes. yes but back to your point, Charles, um, had she been born a man, she would have been able to do all of that stuff of and get away with that. Mm -hmm. And that was the mindset that she was raised to believe. She was raised at her father's side as basically a prince. It didn't matter to her father that she was mm -hmm. a woman. So she could get away with all of the stuff that men in the realm could get away with. All of the shit that Aegon did. Aegon's oh, out there raping people and people are just like, oh, pay her off or kill her. Get rid of it. Yeah. You know, but if it's Rhaenyra, now all of a sudden she's a whore. She's a this, she's yeah. a that mm -hmm. because she's a woman. Exactly. And you're right. You're right. Well, anyway, that sounds about right. <laughs> one, one of the cool parts about this episode <laughs> is that they actually um, kind of established the, the dragon seeds, which are, you know, these bastard mm -hmm. sons of, was it um, uh, the conciliator? So J Jaehaerys, and oh, potentially well, yeah, we'll get Dana. there in a minute, though. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> We're so, a long way so from that. So potentially Jaehaerys, and I think Viserys and Damon's father, Balon. What? It's just Aes the air. The AC oh, turned off. Oh, okay. Keep going, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically we saw a few, but they need to do more with that. But anyway, okay. But yeah, we started seeing that. So the, the next scene that comes up, we get to see everybody's favorite character, Kristen Cole. Mm. He is... <laughs> First day on the job as a uh, hand of the king, and he is just like, oh my God, what, is I, what have I done? Um, but staring into the abyss. I will say this though, when this dude comes walking down the stairs and Aegon's in place, uh, his like little entourage squad as just his friends. He's just got his friends as his like closest guards. Oh, and when he's like, but you're sworn to uh to sell to sell yeah, we'll get there in like, a second. Ah! Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, man. you were serious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So these guys, like, when, when Christopher Cole comes walking down the stairs, they and these dudes there, are yeah. just, like, just chilling. 
and it pissed me off. I yeah. can't even imagine. Like, if he, stand like, at attention. And then they, they like, forward. scoff at him when he makes them stand up, and they're like, whatever, dude. I'm like, oh, bro, you're going to die. Well, like, no, I would have freaking no, beheaded no one, them right then and there. No one respects him. That's probably No, it. they don't respect him, but these guys have never been trained to respect him either. No. They're just no. some freaking slack-jawed idiots and off the street. shouldn't it have been the commander to hire new which would be him because he's both. Yeah. Right. yeah, but he's he's both. So, but yeah. Aegon was just like, yeah, I want my buddies to be freaking knights. And then he's like, well, it's not just knights. It's knights of the king's guard. The yeah. king's guard are supposed to be the best of the best, right. the, the, the greatest knights of Highest the realm. Honor. Don't they have tournaments to determine who these? They did for Kristen Cole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to, just to wear the capes. So Aegon, yeah. I mean, I guess off screen in between episodes, he just was like, yeah, my buddies are going to be knights now. And everybody was like, yeah, all right, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's so a bad what move. What yeah. are you going to say? I mean, also the fact that, so like they lost uh, the, the twins who were like, you know, King's Guard. And, mm -hmm. and I think um, some of them defected to uh, um, Rhaenyra. And so like they were, their numbers were already diminished. Yeah. And um, Kristen Cole, he, he's basically like, well, you know, whatever the king wants. <laughs> he, can get what, he can take what he can get, I guess. Can't tell the baby no. Or yeah. He can get I, 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 find, I find it kind of interesting during that scene when he's walking down the steps that there's one guard. Who's standing. Who is standing at attention. Mm -hmm. Who probably earned his position. Sure. Mm -hmm. And there's the two dorks there that are sitting there, just sitting there on yeah. the stupid steps going, you know. Smoking smoke smoke a cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chilling out. <laughs> <So>. Texting. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, the dynamic is obvious. And here's what you didn't know? make sense so, to me. Why the hell was he late? Because he was freaking out, man. It doesn't matter. You're not the king. You're supposed to be there before the king. He's doing hand of the king shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, you know. Sorry, sir. I had Take to put my new shiny gold necklace on. So he doesn't have a pin. He has a necklace. Oh, Is that by his? the way, that was cool that they did that. Okay, talk to me. Why? How come? So that was actually, that was kind of a thing in the original Game of Thrones book for the hand. It wasn't just a pin. There was also, I think Tyrion had that, where he had like a necklace of hands. Hmm. So like, that's actually how he killed Shay in the books was that. But yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. So basically, that was kind of just something that he had to show that he was the hand instead of just the pin. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, you, like and you can't pin pit a pin in plate metal. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. Put it on, on, the, on the cape. On uh, the side just just wear it around your neck. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. works. Yeah. This poor guy's walking around. Is he wearing I, this I freaking feel, 80 pound I, armor I, all the time? Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel bad for, for him. For Kristen Cole? Yeah, Kristen you know, Cole. You're going to get a lot of hate in the comments I, for that I don't one. care. It's fine. <laughs> why why do you feel bad for him? I don't know. He just seems like he's gotten a bad draw in life. <laughs> <laughs> he's the king's guard. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't want any of this shit. He's bedded two queens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Well, <laughs> speaking of that, Allison was not too pleased with him. I was episode. just about to say, he's getting too fucking cocky. <laughs> like, you work for me, bro. Yeah. I'm not not for her. No, not, not anymore. Her. Not for her. For okay, the king. But... He don't work for himself. <laughs> like, like he is there to serve, and he's just like saying in front of everyone, "Oh, uh, you're gonna give me your favor." Like, oh, that yeah. check oh, your yeah, fucking yes. self, sir. Is that a bad thing? Th yes. Yeah. Why? Because it's just it's fucking rude. And it's why? In, and it's in front of her, it's in front of her brother. Yeah. Huh? It's in front of her brother. Her brother's a dick. Yes, but still. <laughs> He's, I would have fucked with that guy too. Here's the thing: there will be consequences <laughs> if it turns out that she is sleeping with one, well, sleeping with anyone outside. Well, sure. Well, yeah. His brother had already left by the time he asked for her favor. He's though. basically threatening her in that moment, like, "I'll expose let, you. I could let everybody know what's going on between us, and then you'll look like an asshole." Yeah, I didn't get that at all. Well, he's, so he could have true. done that privately and been yeah. like, "Will you give me your favor? I just really uh, like, I really want your favor before I head out on this dangerous mm. mission." But instead, he waits until he's across the fucking way, and he's like, "Um, excuse me, honey bun." Um, he's hollering at her. Yeah, <laughs> holler Did, back. I don't remember it going Did, down like that. Am I mistaken? Because <sighs> I I took this whole thing where he's like, "I'm gonna take the army and we're gonna go north or wherever." Yeah. On this mission, I feel like he did this. Just so he could get the fuck out of King's Landing. I probably. think he did. He probably did. And also, here's another thing, too. A big thing that was happening at that small council meeting was um, Aegon was trying to get up on that, too. Yeah. And so they had to, everyone yeah. had to come. He's like, I am Aegon now. the Con I, I need the Conqueror's I'm just armor. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Like, oh. Hey, look at him like. Yes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> because and I think it's who's that st- one guy on the small council who's just like he's right about everything. The Lannister guy? No, 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 no not the, the Lannister, Lannister guy. Maester? Oh, the Maester. Not, not the Maester. The Who? other guy. The black guy or the, or the? No, no. He's he's like the old white guy who's always like calling out all the stupid decisions there. There's made. only four, like five oh, no, people. No, no, table. None of them are old either. So, so he was actually so the Maester was sitting in between him and Tylen. So right. the guy in the other. I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah he, you he, do. He's the guy who's literally on the left hand of the king. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, who is he? I, I don't know. I forget. But, but he, he's, he's, always, <laughs> he's, always never, he's always the voice of reason in those small Smartest towns. Smartest person in the room, and nobody knows who but, he is. Yeah, let's, let's none of us know who that guy is. Shut up. Uh, that's hilarious. Take your common yeah. sense and get at it. <laughs> so, and, and, I, and I think also one of the big things that they told Aegon was like, hey, we need to be like, because I, I think even, uh, what's her face? Um, Allison basically was kind of like, if you come with the dragon, they're going to come with the dragon. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's, like, she's calling it out. She's like, yeah. look, if we go nuclear, they're going to go nuclear too. This, this mm-hmm. is not this is a this is mutually assured destruction. Yeah, but but also dragons draw attention. So yeah, like, like it would be obvious what their movements were going to be and yes. what they were going to do. Yes. Yeah. So, so like, she does. I yeah. don't know. Bela had a got real close before anybody noticed she was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it was like a mile. At the same time, it was kind of like like Christian Cole's whole thing is that we're going to take the small army that, you know, isn't going to be able to win any battles and we're just going to move fast and try to, you know, uh, make the first move before, you know, the blacks can respond. Because yeah. they want yeah, to take Karen Hall too, right? Yeah, I think they're, they're going. Yeah. They're both they're going for Karen Hall. Hall yeah. but, but they don't know that Damon's there with his giant dragon already yeah. has taken it. Well, I guess we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, we'll get there in a minute. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the next strong is so excited. <laughs> the next scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yes. Well, but, but what was interesting about, like, you know, Kristen Cole's plan is that even um, the queen or the, uh, what, what's her name? Allison. Allison. Even Allison was, was like, like, this is a stupid move. Like, yeah. you shouldn't be making this move. Well, they made it very clear in this episode that that hotter blood is prevailing at the moment. Like, we cannot control these people. These people want war. They, they want that idea of glory. They want the revenge. The, the king's son is dead. Well, there's, there's even the, the Lannister in the small council. He was like, give us time to like raise an army at yes. Asterly Rock, yes. Yes. you know, and then like, we'll all march out together. And Kristen Cole's just like, nah, it's gotta be now. It's got, it, yeah. that takes like six months though, for, yeah. realistically, in order to send that message, get the army up, get all the supplies, get everything moving be- and then go to the location. They're gonna, that's like a half a year. Because, <laughs> because, More dragon riders because, because, you can get there like that. Exactly. <laughs> because Tylan Lannister, his brother, mm-hmm. Jason is the Lord of Casterly Rock. So that's where it, they were twins too, right? Yeah, they were twins too. Are they? Yeah, a lot of twins. Jason. Yeah, a lot of Game twins. of Thrones. Yeah, especially um, on the Lannister side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the uh, The next scene is uh, Rhaenyra hanging out with uh, the the Master of Whispers, the White Worm, M- Misery. Sorry. Misery. Yeah, Lady Misery. Lady Misery. She's got a couple names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And wait, who? And, and we finally got the uh, Damon's former squeeze, Lady Misery, Missaria, the Whisperer, the, Whisper, the lady the, has all the, the spies, lady or yeah. the worm, yeah, yeah. the white worm. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of we cool. found out, we got com- confirmation that she did raise the alarm yeah. about the assassination attempt. Yes, assassination. That was, that was weird. So okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I know, I know what scene we're talking about now, but I, I yeah. do have a question before we get into the conversation. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sure. So she mentioned the dragon is out flying over the ocean, mm-hmm. and he's pissed. He's pissed. The, 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 dra- the dragon is annoyed. And you can tell he's very acting very erratically. Why is that happening? Okay. Okay. So it could be two things. I was actually just texting Charles about this last night. Mm. So my original thought was, so you know, that was Lenor's dragon. Right. Rhaenyra's they, original husband, yeah. who they never actually banged, and then he faked his <laughs> they death. Did. To they leave. tried. Uh, but he couldn't get her pregnant. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> they faked his death. Uh-huh. But everyone thinks that he's dead. So technically, Sea Smoke should uh be able to, to get a new rider. Yeah. But that's not how the lore is mm-hmm. in, in the books. So uh, it's either they're bringing him back oh. or, yeah, it doesn't make oh. a lot of sense to do that. Or they just killed him off. That was in season one. Yes. Yes. He's the guy that they sent away. He was raining. Yeah. He was raining. He, 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 he rode a boat to Pentos. Remember? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. He was raining. His dragon. That's yeah. his dragon. Rainy and Corliss's son. Because okay. it, a dragon's attachment to its rider is so tight that if, if it's not, if the writer's not dead, the dragon just is like, no, that's my guy. I can't yeah. take on anybody right. else. Or go to, or so, go to him. He he probably, yeah. there's, and there's probably some kind of like weird magic. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So he has, he's, okay, I get it. So I get it now. So so there's so a, there's the a, dragon's really confused and pissed off. There's a possibility <laughs> that while he's in Pento, something bad is happening to him. Yeah. And the dragon's freaking out because Got of that. You. That's my okay. impression of I, it. I like I, it. Some hot things happening. I'm going with that. 
I'm going with that. Yeah. He got choked by. <laughs> not in the Whoa. Fun way. <laughs> in the fun way, but not in the fun way. <laughs> it's not exactly. deep. But, but ultimately, yeah. ultimately, what should, like, and I think one of the reasons they showed him, they showed Sea Smoke, and they showed a riderless Sea Smoke. Uh -huh. Hopefully, we're going to see this in the next episode. Again, talking more about the dragon scene. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of the, in the same kind of vein of, of thought, the next scene is actually Rhaenyra speaking to one of the daughters of Damon. I can't remember. I don't Raina. know. Raina. Um, basically saying, look, um, you're kind of useless. <laughs> so oh. I'm going to uh, give you the job of protecting all the babies and I'm going to send you someplace that's safer. And like, I mean, that's legitimately what it is because she calls it out. She's like, you're only doing this because I don't have a dragon. And I'm like, uh, yeah. 100%. You so, are less strategically valuable than your sister. So, so you need yeah. to go to somewhere else. <laughs> so to explain that, so basically she's sending, just because of the danger around everything, mm -hmm. she's sending her kids to yes. two different places. So she send, she's going with Joffrey, who should be older by now, but whatever. Joffrey and his, his dragon, Taraxes, they're going with Reyna to Lady Jane, who is Rhaenyra's cousin. Sure. And then the two younger kids, Viserys the younger and Aegon the younger, they are going to Pentos with somebody that Damon knows. Okay. So just to kind of keep her kids safe, because yep. it's like, I can't focus if my kids are in. Oh, here. yeah. No, that's a legit, like, worry. Yeah. I mean, it was a good, like, strategically, it's a smart yeah, move. Absolutely. For sure. Because you, you don't want retaliation against your kids. Of and it, you, if you don't tell them where, where they're going to be, they can just be on the other side of the ocean, safe exactly. away from people. It makes total sense. This this poor girl is really upset because she wants to be part of the action. Plus, her fiance just died. She wants to be useful. Yeah, yes. and and she's like, now I'm just getting sent away with the babies. She was engaged to Luke from birth. Yeah, and now he's dead. She and so she, she has, and she doesn't have a dragon. Yeah, so she just feels very lost. Why, yeah, her, why does she not have a dragon? Her dragon. Her dragon, egg, her dragon died, or I think it died, or it didn't. Well, she can't she get another hatched. one. Oh, never hatched. Never oh, okay. Hatched. She can't get another one. Um, I don't know. She doesn't have another one. She should. Like, I don't know how that shit works. I don't know bro. either. <laughs> like, they go down to the dragon cave and find an egg. But, and, and just to confirm, but, Bela, her sister, is riding Mooncloud. Yes. So that's her. The white or one moon dance. Moon, or moon dancer? dancer? Yeah, Moon Dancer. Um, I think it's Stormcloud. Who okay, yeah. was... Mooncloud was hers. He, it's oh, hers. Moon Dancer. Moon Dancer was hers. Who was it originally? It was no one's originally. It was hers. Isn't he... He's fairly young. Sure? Yeah, because right? he's very he's small. Young. He's okay. a young dragon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so let me just ask something because I, I was, I had an idea in my head when they were, they were like shipping these kids off and they mm -hmm. had like the crate and they were like, oh, one's just a baby hatchling. It was like a small dragon, but then they had the other crate that had the eggs in it. Mm. Are those the eggs that end up being gifted to Daenerys when she goes over there to, to wed, uh, Khal Drogo? Um, because there's the three eggs, yeah. they haven't yeah. hatched yet. They go to, across the sea to Pentos or wherever. They would end up in somebody's possession on that side of the world and then be gifted to Daenerys when she's old enough. Possibly that's what the show is doing. Potentially. But there's a story about three eggs getting stolen by someone way back in Aegon the Conqueror's time. But this is way after Aegon the Conqueror's right. time. Right. So they, that, so like all of the book nerds have been like, oh, those are the, the eggs that Daenerys has, that's, the ones that Elizabeth Farman. I, I, yeah, so. I think it's funny that you brought that up because that's exactly what I thought when I was. That's what I thought. Go, I think they're going to the gonna tie this in somehow to yeah. those three eggs. I so bad not. shit's going to happen to the kids, and the eggs are going to get stolen, mm -hmm. and then they're going to end up being Daenerys. The ones is that that yeah. I like that. I do too. It's I mean, it's, it's it could be. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure book people hate that. It's predictable. But, you know, I mean, sure, it's, it's predictable, short. but I like it. <laughs> I'm either. I'm indifferent. It could be either way. Okay. Yeah. But that just means bad shit happens to her kids. Well, there can't be any more Targaryens yeah, left. So I guess like there's you know, no they're, Targaryens they're, left yeah, after gonna the get, show. Yeah. So well, no, 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 no. Necessarily. The house is severely depleted. It's okay, not wiped out. That's not yet. But that's the, like the dragons further. get wiped out. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. yeah. All the dragons. That's, are, that's well, not well, not all the dragons. Most of the dragons, the most powerful ones. The but, dragons die out eventually. Hmm. But but if uh, if it stays true to the book, there is some shit that goes on during that trip to Pento. Oh yeah, I do have one question that has nothing to do with the, with the show. So talk to us. In the, the original Game of Thrones, hmm. the show, there's the giant dragon head in the bottom of the castle. Yes, yes. What dragon is that? Valerian. Valerian. Which is, is who? Aemon. That was that Aegon. Was the original Aegon the Conqueror. So he's not in this show. He's the yeah. Black so that was no, Aegon. Aegon the Conqueror, Magor, and then Viserys. Viserys was the last rider of Valerian. Okay. So. Question. All right. Hit us. Uh, Aemon's dragon is the largest one in 
current. Amond, yes, Vagar. Yeah. Vagar. Vagar is the is the largest dragon still alive. Right. Yeah. He is not the skull she. that is the she yeah. is she is not the one no. that has the skull. No. Okay. Vagar was one of Aegon the Conqueror's sisters' dragons. Visenya. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm. Okay. Gotcha. Thank yeah. you. Clearing this up for us normies, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and basically, Matt, the, the king that died in the first season, mm -hmm. uh, Balerion was his dragon. No, no, no. It, it wasn't? No. He didn't write it? So so here's the thing. Jaehaerys, so the dragon that Daemon was singing to, Vermithor. that was, Vermithor, that was Jaehaerys' dragon. The Bronze Fury. Hmm. Vermithor. Like yeah. I, I, but I, there's two, yeah, I'm Viserys getting confused. Did ride, um, <laughs> so I, need, I need a spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, so without <laughs> that FBI wall, so, yeah. so do, you, in the, do you remember yeah. that episode where Damon was in Dragonstone and he was singing to that dragon? You just saw the head and it was like breathing fire everywhere. Vaguely, yes. That yeah. was Jaehaerys' dragon. Oh, Vermithor. okay. After he died. Yes. And the dragon was in like mourning or something. Well, the dra no one would the dra no one had ridden him since Jaehaerys had died. Because sure. he is a feisty boy. Yes, okay. He is. is he still alive? Yes. yes. Okay. He's so probably he, he's the second largest. Just dragon behind Vega. Okay, I don't want to yeah. spoil it. I'm just yeah. assuming it'll be some epic thing where one of the one of them will ride. But, but we've seen we've seen him, so it's like it's not a spoiler. Okay, that and be. correct me if I'm wrong, but um, uh, Viserys, mm. Ray Rhaenyra's father, mm -hmm. he rode. But he, he was the rode Balerion, but he only rode him like one, one time. And by this point, Balerion was like old, could barely get it yeah. up. Yeah, so it's basically just him showing, like, proving, yeah, I'm a dragon rider, sure. I can be king. And he never took another dragon out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next sequence is by far my favorite in this episode. Uh, we've get we get Damon uh, entering <laughs> Aaron Hall, <laughs> and just was like. It was it was filmed like a horror movie, yes. really and I was like, "This is amazing! Yeah. I want more of this shit." Like he gets into so this Heron Hall place just looks haunted That's already. Right. Yeah. Just be, nothing good has ever happened. Nothing, yeah. to Hall. Place, it got melted by yeah. Aegon the Conqueror. Yeah. Everybody's dead, and then uh, the the clubfoot strong guy like burned his entire family while he was yes. there last season. Yeah, yeah. nobody so, investigated this, that shit. Right. This place is just cursed beyond but, belief. But, oh yeah, they they, they started this whole scene. With like this really cool like POV dragon point of view video dude dragon riding thing. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. it, was it so like, fun? I mean, yeah. It was just like, what is this? <laughs> this is new. <laughs> this is really cool, yeah. you know? And it's and raining like, and there's yeah, lightning. Just, and, 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 I thought it was the coolest and, shit. And, yeah, just, and just to explain everyone, um, Lara Strong, the master of whisper. Oh, we completely forgot about his thing. We'll get we can get back to that. Okay. Basically, Lara Strong is the lord of Heron Hall. Yes, and just because so, he killed everyone, he killed everyone. <laughs> by default. Yeah, and then yeah. Simon and Simon Strong is the Castellan. He's basically kind of like just caretaking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's Boromir's dad yeah. from Lord yeah. of the Rings. It's kind of like how Littlefinger <laughs> was the Lord of Harrenhal, but it was just a title. He never actually like went there because he believed it was cursed. Oh yeah, and he didn't it want is. any of that. Oh, 100%. I mean, yeah, he, he didn't I want any of that evil on his. So Ricky Bobby. <laughs> but, yes. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not staying the night in that place. And, and, they yeah. made, and they made him Lord of Heron Hall because, okay, you kind of need this big title if you're going to marry Liza Heron. Like, would you sense. stay in Heron Hall for $3,000 for one night? You know, it's like one of those things, you know? Airbnb. Yeah. But, but it was funny how, like, uh, Damon shows up and he just, he's expecting, like, a lot of like resistance and stuff like that, and the, the castle's just like deserted. Completely, yeah. yeah. There's one dude, and he punches him in the face for no reason. <laughs> well, there's like there's like four, there's like four people. Has been so lonely for so long. He was like, "Oh my god, do you want to brush each other's hair? <laughs> <laughs> Each other our secrets? Do you want to sing songs? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, and also, let the me thing show is, you everything. And interestingly, <laughs> and so, and so, I love it. So, my bastard daughter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's a freak. Okay. Oh, she's really so, cool yeah, yeah. so y'all going to so, die okay, down here. So before we get into that. Sorry, Charles. Go ahead. So Simon Strong is like some cousin of Lara Strong, and he has no loyalty to Laris because he knows. Well, no, he Lara's knows gonna, what happened. Yeah. 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 I mean, he says so much to Damon. He's like, look, there hasn't been in this wet place, there's a fire. Like, yeah. come on, bro. <laughs> I mean, he he bent the knee the moment. Oh, yeah. Damon walked yeah. in the door. Damon was like, like oh, you this place up. <laughs> yeah. And he was like bending the knee immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he kept messing up his title, though, which was a fun, there was a oh, bit of a comedic right. element there. Yes. He's like, grace oh, my prince. prince. And he's like, I'm your grace. Your and he's grace. like, my bad. Dude. My, my prince, gr gr girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and so also, we get a glimpse of Alice Rivers. So, is it the witchy one? Yes. Witchy one. So we're going to see more of her later, but it was good. I like her. They introduced her. I like she, her. She's kind of a freak. She well, oh, I mean, I just yes. get weird vibes from her, and I'm like, this is going to be interesting. Now, now, Charles, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the books, wasn't she like? Uh, didn't she play a role in the Battle of the Burning Mills? Because I believe that there was like a crossbow woman 
who uh, basically killed like the lead Bracken soldier or something like that. Mm. Like, part of the Riverlands. She was like a, a pretty a, a pretty important character in, in the story of the books, but like they kind of like she has a different her. role a little later on. I don't mm. want to spoil, but yeah, like I, I don't know about that specifically, but I know she played another role when it comes to Heron Hall as a whole mm -hmm. later on. Uh Damon also refuses to eat any of the food. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm not trying to get poison. I'm not trying to get food poisoning here. Yeah. Uh, I, and he's he seems well, very poisoning. Yeah, he seems very <laughs> upset that the castle's in disrepair, though. He's yeah. like pissed off that his his roof leaks in his room, and he's like, "What the? Fuck is that, damn! <laughs> I had to pick the shittiest castle to claim." <laughs> yeah, he, he, he also wanted to like like conquer it. Like, yeah, he yeah. yeah. wanted hand it over wanted to. Wanted it him. I mean, he I, I will the story. Supported. I do have to say it. I have. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm doing this every week. But man, mm -hmm. the the sets. Yeah. Yeah. This castle. Oh yeah, looks this, like they went to fucking Heron Hall. Yes, in real and, life. in real life. Yeah, yeah, and filmed it. This looks it's, amazing. It's amazing. This that whole, is what do you do with your budget? Yeah, right. This whole sequence from the dragon POV riding in the storm Just with the rain, it, everything would looked amazing. Yeah. The whole deal. And I you know, it. and it, it actually it was great in terms of how they kept continuity with how it looked in Game mm -hmm. of Thrones. Yeah, so yeah, that was also good. Hundred percent. But um, one thing I I don't know if this scene happened yet. I wanted to go back. Did you? Did we skip over the Aegon scene where he was like, we still going to, we haven't gotten, oh, we haven't done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. I don't know if the dream sequence comes in later. Do you guys want to just knock that one out? Yeah. Since it's, we're talking about Damon. Okay. It's, I know it's, we're, so we're going to skip forward a little bit, but since we're talking about Damon in Heron Hall, we might as well talk about the dream sequence thing. And the camera. Um, again, it's freaking shot. Like it's a horror film. Mm -hmm. He's like in his room and he's like, God damn, freaking roof is leaking. But he's got like <laughs> three swords blocking his door. Cause he still thinks he's going to be assassinated. It's Something trying to break in. And then it starts like... This was too easy. They're going to kill me in my sleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, it starts like, like something's on the other side of the wall trying to get in. And he's like, he's got a sword out and he's ready to fight and mm -hmm. takes this. And then there's nothing there. And then he starts following it. And then he sees, and this was just... That was awesome. God, it was such a freaking... Uh, yes. When he walks into the room and he sees young Rhaenyra. Millie yeah. Alcock. Young Rhaenyra, which is, it means something to him because that's like, that's, I don't know. I just love the fact that they use that instead of the older Rhaenyra because it just signifies oh, like, yeah. hey, this is not real. Mm -hmm. It was just a perfect way of doing that. And he, she's sewing the yeah. head of the baby back yeah, together yeah. that was murdered in the last episode. And he's the one responsible for that shit. And he's like, oh, fuck. Like, I and really messed and up. Some, she, and what she said. And what she says to him. Here I have to do. Cleaning, cleaning up, up your, your mess, mess again. <laughs> and it's like, God damn. And then he snaps too and he's standing in front of the old wood. The and weir then that weirwood, the weirwood, and then that old the old, the, uh, the the witch lady in the back is like, "You're gonna fucking die here," <laughs> and, it, and he's just like, "What Dude. the fuck man, is going I, I would have what? I would have immediately just gone up and got on my dragon. I'm, I'm, out. I'm, out. I'm, out. I'm out. I'm going to River Run. <laughs> it's through it. this. <laughs> well, just, what's interesting is that in the books, so like the the godswood trees or the weirwoods, um, so like they're obviously connected to the old gods, like yes. direct, directly. And so, um, like, there was a scene in uh, Storm of Swords where uh, Jamie Lannister kind of falls asleep on the, the stump of a cut-down weirwood, mm -hmm. and he has these prophetic dreams. And so, like, whenever you're in proximity to a weirwood and you're, like, a, like sleepwalking or asleep or, like, whatever, uh, the weirwood influences, like, you know, kind of, like, your dreams, and it sure. allows you to kind of, like, see, like, the past and the future or, like, you know, some type of prophecy. Was that the dream that he had about his mom? Uh, it might have been. Okay. I All forget. Right. It was in the bottom of Casterly Rock. I remember that one. I just, okay. just want to say, I, this show shines when it dips into that freaking mystical, mm -hmm. weird and, yes, stuff. Right. And, and the it's thing, so fun. And the thing that's great about it, and this is, I love when they do it like this, is anytime you see something magical, it's not just like, oh, like this. It's like, it's it means something. weird. Yeah. It means something. It's always weird. It's always eerie. It's just because that's what it should be. It's yeah. not so, it's still something, even though dragons, you know, dragons are real and all that stuff, but it's like magic itself, like pure magic is always something that's like, should be looked at bizarrely and should yeah. be treated it as It makes you like, question whether or yes. not you actually saw what you think you yes. saw. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so. also, George R. R. Martin's rules for magic is there's always a cost to it. Yes. Sure. So, yes. so it's not something that people can just run around using willy-nilly. Yeah. And, and like when it is used, there's usually like repercussions for using it. I love it. This this sequence is by far my favorite part of the episode. The whole mm -hmm. Heron Hall thing. Yeah, with that was good. So, that that was, was good. good. If, if you were an actor and you were like cast in Damon's role <laughs> and you, would you like, 
ever want to take your armor off? Never. No. <laughs> I, I, he looks never. just so never. badass. I, I, just, I would never take my costume. I, I'm going home with it. I am so glad <laughs> I was wrong about the casting of Matt Smith. Oh, he's so good. Role, yeah. He's, he's been so, so good. good. Yeah. yeah. He fits perfectly as yes. a role. Yeah. I, I have that same feeling about a lot of the casting choices about this show. I'm like, <laughs> that's very strange but yeah, yeah. It, but it's, man they're just they're knocking it out when matt smith was cast as doctor who, doctor I, I, who? I, was, I was like that's a weird choice because <laughs> yeah he's kind of a weird looking guy he is <laughs> but, but, but then, <laughs> then like he like killed it you know like yeah so he, he's a really good actor yeah he's really good i'm I'm loving him as damon and i'm uh, this again i'm gonna say it this sequence was freaking amazing like I, i'll go back and watch it again for sure it's so fun uh the next sequence now i know we kind of already talked about it this is kirsten cole getting mm. ready, getting ready to so leave beautiful. And he's he's uh, he's messing around with the queen a little bit. I want to argue with you about this because okay. I don't see where you're coming from with him being like, look, w I mean, by all rights, they're a thing. They're a couple between themselves. Like her and him mm -hmm. are relate. They have a relationship, mm -hmm. whether you want to agree it to it or not. not it is equal. It, it, not he equal. Is beneath her, I didn't he say has that. no right to ask her for anything. I, I, she is the dowager queen. She should be willing to do that because they're obviously connected in some way. No, yeah, but that's got to be a secret. The same thing if it were Viserys fucking one of his maids and being yeah. like, oh, he needs to treat her better. No, you wouldn't. He guards well, well, her door. Well, 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 I'll tell you this. He's not really, I mean, even though he's, he's not just a glorified he's he's, door he's door not, he's not, even though he's lowborn, he is not just Lord Commander, which he shouldn't be screwing around anyway. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Right. sure. But he's also Hand of the King, so now he's risen very, very high. Yeah. Granted, she's still the Dowager Queen. I mean, and yes, Gwen was in that scene, and he was watching them. May maybe yeah. now yeah. with his new title, he can, you know, yeah. throw his weight around a, lot a little, little bit. Around. A lot of people, a lot <laughs> That's of what he's trying to do. A lot yeah. of people are they're still weird about that in the society because they're just like, they're still lowerborn. If it was his kids or maybe a couple things down the road, then they'd be okay with it. I, I I still am not quite sure why she's pissed off at him. Is it just because she's the hand now, or he's the hand? Is like what what is what is Allison's reason? Because for being... now that they're fucking, he doesn't listen to her. Yes, she thought he was biddable and pliable, and because he's not, she's mad. That's not his. That's not his problem. Because remember, because remember, <laughs> remember the whole thing that um, it's kind of like what Rhaenyra said to Missaria: "Don't take my kindness for pliancy." Okay, I I, I get it. And as as he, Christian Cole was kind of her toy to manipulate and play with. Mm -hmm. And now the king is like, no, man, you're my homie. I'm going to make you my hand. So now he has to choose mm -hmm. who he's going to listen to and be manipulated by yeah. the most. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and, I don't, and I don't think he wants to be in the position to where he has to listen to either one. He doesn't want, he to, be doesn't want to be in this spot. <laughs> he doesn't want to be in that position. And, and, oh, yeah. and you know, and now he's like, I'm going to go take the, the, the horse soldiers and we're going to go to the north fuck both of you yeah. and I'm going to just go <laughs> yeah, get out of my space. Yeah. A little. There, there, also, there is also so. an element to this scene where basically when Christian Cole comes into the courtyard, he sees um, Allison talking right. with her brother. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know that's her brother. And so like, he's kind of jealous at little first bit. until like, yes. she's she, 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 yeah. Until he gets she, a little she's like, this is my brother. Jude hates yeah. him so much. I hate him so much. <laughs> <laughs> what is my note about him saying? Kristen Cole, Kristen Cole is getting so cocky. I want to smack the shit out of him. Oh my God. in my notes. And this makes me like him more. So, team Go ahead, Go ahead. Go ahead. I think it was in episode one. It was either in one or two. I think it was in episode one. Allison went to her father and was mm -hmm. like, when you undermine me, yeah. you make my son not listen to me. And I'm the only person who is trying to get him to not just get himself fucking killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now he's fucking gone. And now Kristen Cole is the hand. She has no voice in this council now. And yeah. she is spinning. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And even more so. I see where you're coming from. Because, like, after... Do we get to the scene where um, Aegon's putting on his... Not yet. Not yet. Oh, that, okay, that's next. I know. We're 40 minutes in. We haven't even gotten halfway <laughs> yeah. through the episode yet. <laughs> pick up the pace. <laughs> the Connie sauce. <laughs> um, okay, so real quick, I just want to say that Allison's brother is a freaking prick, and oh, I hope yeah. he does. Yeah. Uh, he's a immediately. He, he's as, a soon, as soon as I saw him, I was like, fuck this guy. He's a, t he's a typical <laughs> highborn prick. Yeah. 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 Get, some, get some whiskers on your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the actor, though. I'm sure he's a nice dude. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, some people are weird about it. I know. Oh, some yeah. people are so, yeah. Like, like Jude and I have seen that actor in many different things, and he's always awesome. Like, he always plays a prick, though. Yeah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get that look about it. <laughs> uh, we, we're, uh, the next scene, we're back with Rhaenyra at her high council or small council, whatever you want to call it. Uh, oh, just the mansplaining. Yeah, the, the, mansplaining. the mansplaining <laughs> session where everybody's trying to tell her what to do. Uh, well, I get, she's not making a decision. That's why. Yeah, that's... 
everybody around her is like, you have to do something. And she's like, no, nah, we can no, wait. I don't. I got to think about it. We can wait. We're going to we're we're take this. And she wants to wait for Damon, right? She wants to wait for word from to him. A, to a degree. Okay. And I think that's, again, that's part of the problem where it's just like, do something. Yeah. Even if it's like. Well, both sides are dealing with that. Allison's dealing with the same thing with her crowd. Like, they're all like, let's do something. And she's like, no, we need to wait. But she's and, not the queen on. The, she's not the queen of power. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. These guys. Who was it? Um. Her. Her aunt. Right. What's her name again? Renice. 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 Sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. Renice gets up and basically freaking berates them all. Yeah. Like you bunch of freaking slack jawed idiots need to. I love that saying. You need to stop freaking telling her what to do. <laughs> yeah. And listen to your queen. Remember, she's the fucking queen. But, yeah. but at the same time, granted, I I agree. But at the same time, <laughs> it's all this stuff is happening. Yeah. And she's not doing anything. Yeah. There's no it. decision happening. <laughs> Sorry. Easy on the table. <laughs> <laughs> a little passionate. I get, I'm passionate for Hot D. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but it's just, um, there's basically, it's like she's not doing anything. And I'll, I think they talked about the Bracken, the, I forgot Black the name of the battle. Blackwood, Bracken. Brackwood, Blacken, Clash, and some of the other stuff that's happening. And it's just like, they're just like, we need to do something. We need to, what yeah. are we doing? Yeah. You know? Uh, okay. And Renice also kind of like, Calls out um, Jahari as the conciliator, and she's like, "Remember, mm -hmm. like that was like she's descended from him, and he was the wisest king, the best king, yeah, the, the best longest king." king. The longest oh king. yeah, oh that she speech did was on that. point. I love that speech. Yeah, the and, best and, is the best. Yeah, and and she basically said like like he would always take time to make the right decision, mm -hmm. and, and that was You're basically right. like putting them in their place, be like, give her time. I love that. That was the, right. the, the a perfect thing for her to say. Well, it was kind of funny because Jude was she was kind of schooling me on like um, <laughs> the how the the throne um, kind of chooses like who gets yes. to sit on it. Yeah. And, and, it's and, like and, the wand chooses the wizard. And and you, you were, you were telling <laughs> yes, me about yes, how like yes. um <laughs> like they made the wrong choice not choosing Renice to yes. be, be the ruler. You want to just uh, oh. like, give, give that the rundown? Well, I don't want to spoil anything, but so this is just my own headcanon. Um, but there are there are legends that the the throne will reject whoever it, it finds unworthy. And that's what it did with Viserys. It ate him alive because mm -hmm. Viserys wasn't a very... Um, he was weak. He was weak. He was a, a, a little bit of a do-nothing. Because you have, you know, the conciliar and then you have the facilitator. That's who Viserys yeah. was. Yeah. And so I think uh, the line of succession should have gone to Rhaenys. And I think that she would have been a great ruler. And I think yeah. the chair would have accepted her. But it, mm -hmm. they went with Viserys and the chair ate him alive. And I think that the chair is only accepting Aegon because his name is Aegon. Yes. And really? I think I think that, uh, and I don't want to spoil anything for what happens next. Sure. Uh, because Aegon the Conqueror conquered. Yeah. yeah. And the Mad King was named Aegon. And the chair. No, 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 no. It was Eris. Oh, okay. Forget I said that. <laughs> uh, you know, like, so that's just my own headcanon yeah. is that an Aegon can sit in the chair uh, who well, knows just, for who well, knows for how long? Well, we also don't know like what the throne is going to do because right. we saw what happened with Magor the Cruel. Right. Magor the Cruel, <clears throat> the throne allegedly killed him. Yeah, he was unworthy, and the chair fucking murdered him. <laughs> stuck a stuck oh. a, stuck a knife through his throat. Yeah, in fact, uh, w w when you look at the opening scenes of season two, like you know the opening credit sequence, yeah, and you look at the tapestries, there, there's a very clear tapestry of. of that happening where like he's got like a sword through his uh through his neck as he's like sitting on the throne. Mm -hmm. And so that's and see, that's yeah, you'll see. See, I feel like that. the if the throne if they're gonna give like some kind of a sentient power to the throne, then mm -hmm. it's it can't be as simple as like, oh his name's Aegon. It, it's gotta be that's something. Just my more. Head I, I know because because er, Eris constantly cut himself on the throne. Eris the Mad King okay. constantly cut himself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Robert never did. That's weird. <laughs> I know, because <laughs> Eris. Okay. Eris let's, let's, uh, yeah. We got to we got to keep strong. Yeah, yeah. We got to keep moving though. Uh, okay, so the next scene is Aegon getting his his conqueror's armor on because he wants favorite scene. He yes. wants to fake his way to the top or yeah. something. Uh, okay, just want, I'll I'll pass it off to you. You haven't talked that much this episode, so go ahead. What what was your favorite part of this this scene? Yeah, so like this scene was my favorite because um, so Aegon is putting on Aegon the Conqueror's armor, which is Valerian steel. It's like really badass armor, but like. Uh, my favorite character in the show, uh, the, mm. the Clubfoot, <laughs> com comes in here, and Jude, Jude gives me like such a <laughs> such a big problem yeah. because like I, I like him so much. But uh, so like uh, Larry's, you know, he's very much the little finger of mm. uh, right. this series, and he <clears throat> comes in and he knows that like if the king flies out into battle, like he's just going to get killed, and so he does what no one else can do, which is basically like he just sidles up to the king and he's like, "Hey, you know, like." 
it's a really good thing that you're flying out because, you know, like they, they need your strength and their power. But there are some people who are saying that like, you know, mm-hmm. like this, 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 He's this. so easily manipulated. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, 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 uh, Liable. and the clubfoot <laughs> knows exactly like what buttons to push. Mm. And, um, then at the end of it, he mama um, shames him. All, well, <laughs> at, at the end of the scene, basically, uh, the clubfoot becomes the official master of whispers mm-hmm. uh, for, for Aegon. And uh, in, in this episode as well, the white worm uh, misery or, or Lady Misery becomes the master of whispers for right. Rhaenyra. And so now, like, oh, now, now yeah. we're, we're getting like the dueling set, mist- uh, whispers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're getting the, the, the uh, <laughs> dueling setup of spy masters. Yeah. 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 Yes. I like yeah, that. We're, we're, I love we're, it. we're getting the, the spy wars, basically. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Love it. Good stuff. But, but I, I'm a big Clubfoot fan, so mm-hmm. I, whenever he shows up, I'm always like, ooh, what's going to happen? Well, that's because the, like, when, when this guy's got his hands in something, you know what's going to get all, like, he's going to maneuver. If he, if he were a real situation. person in this world, that's what It would be 100% it would yeah. be. He is the master of whispers. He would love yeah. to do that. Creeping through but, but, the tunnel and listening think, in on people's conversations. Because I think that, and this was really important what he did is that he didn't shame him. He didn't try to berate him. He no, just, no, it, no. And he made sure that most people got out of the room. So mm-hmm. it was just him and him. And he basically said, yeah, but if you're away, your mom's going to try and ruin your stack. Yeah. So you does, he have a, right? does he get to sit at the table now? If he's a master of... Yeah, he should be in the small council, be. right? He should be, yeah. I think he's been on the small council. No, no. No, no he no. hasn't. So, so Not yet. Now that he's an official lord, uh, he has a role to play on the small council. Nice. Ooh, he guy. actually should have been there earlier, but that's another story. Mm-hmm. Well, well yeah. uh, he made Aegon think it was his own idea. Well, yeah. a- Aegon's mm-hmm. father right. refused to have a master, right. master of whispers. And so this, this is kind of like the, um, the creation of that role, essentially, that goes all the way down to like where we see varies mm-hmm. um, in, in yeah. Game of Thrones and stuff. Viserys was like, we don't need a master of whispers. Everything's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of going out to battle, he decides to go hang out at the bar with his buddies. And we're going <laughs> to kind of speed run through this bit because we're getting a little long winded on this one. But um, uh, he, they, they end up at the bar. But the, be, before that happens, we're sitting at a table with a bunch of like no names. Mm-hmm. And this one guy is kind of like bouting himself as like, I'm actually the freaking bastard son of the king, you know, not the actual king well, now, but the previous king. And I, I'm like, I'm half Targaryen and shit like that. And I'm watching this guy and I'm like, <laughs> actually, I don't believe you. Yeah. Actually, what he, actually, what he said and it was very important. He said that not that he was Jaehaerys' son. He said he was Balon's son, which would have made him Daemon and Viserys' half-brother. Hmm. Yeah, so so this character was actually introduced at the end of the previous episode. He's yeah. the guy who walked out and saw the rat catchers hanging. Yep. Was oh, like, yes. what, what's up with this? Yes. But uh, so we've got two characters here. We've got this guy whose name is Ulf. Yes. And then, Ulf. And then we've got uh, Ulf the White. We, we've got Big Bill, uh, aka <laughs> yeah. uh, what is it, Stephen Strong? Hugh Hammer. Hugh Hammer. He's not in this scene. Uh, no, he's not in this scene. Oh, okay. But, but like, but he's a character that's been introduced this season, and these two characters play a, a very important role kind of going forward. Okay. So like they're setting these characters up early on. And I actually like that the fact that uh, they kind of explained like what a dragon seed is and mm-hmm. like that the, these people with these this white hair, uh, even though they're young, uh, are probably descended from Targaryen. And mm-hmm. I like that the show made him not quite so white haired to, yeah. to show like he's full of shit. Mm, yeah. 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 And also the thing is they even kind of introduced it last season when they saw all the bastards that Aegon has running around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And then uh, so Aegon gets drunk with his buddies goes to the brothel. Gives everyone gives all, the rounds, uh, all the rounds on, rounds on the house. <laughs> and uh, and then heads off to the brothel with, with his uh, with his entourage and his, his squire entourage right? That he had just said <laughs> You are sworn to chastity. Yes. You know what, you guys? Let's go to a brothel. Let's go. Out. Let's get laid. <laughs> let's go out. Let's well, go. Well, well, the whole thing is that uh, the, the squire of Sir Kristen Cole is a like, virgin. They, yeah, they wanted to get him laid before he goes off to war. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, no, all, all, all of his all yeah. of his king's guard are, are, are like, oh yeah, let, let's get the brothel. He's like, <laughs> he's like, well, wait a minute, you guys took a vow of chastity, and they they kind of like all laugh and they're like, oh wait, you're serious? <laughs> <laughs> serious? And he goes, but then he goes with them anyway. What's the uh, what's yeah. the squire's name in, in Game of Thrones? That the Podrick. 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 Pod the, the rod. I miss Pod the rod. rod. <laughs> Pod the rod. <laughs> Wait a minute. The, he was awesome. The, the hookers gave you the money back? <laughs> That's how good he was. <laughs> what did you do to them? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Details. <laughs> but Go ahead. this is the first time in this, I think, whole series where they went like old school Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. they went full on porn. Oh, yeah. Full porn. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. There's some, there's some cock sucking. Sex and position. And Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and, and full frontal male nudity. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, just, I'm just glad I wasn't watching this with my mom. <laughs> that 
that would have been really good awkward. Call. Good call. But, well, you know? well, what's crazy is like they've been very fairly reserved this yeah. season. Yeah, too yeah. reserved. Then, then, and then right now, it's, it's like when they're walking through the brothel, it's just like, Jeez. wow. Like, like, <laughs> Physiology. That, yeah, that, that, that belongs on Pornhub. And then, and then the dude, the, the uh, Eamon character has his, his moment to shine. Just stands up, full upright, six pack abs, yeah. and just schlong, <laughs> and then walks off. He's like, "Yeah, what he wants." Either. So here's the thing. So, so here's what we find out about that. Yes. I was actually wrong. I actually thought that was Alice Rivers. Clearly, it's not. But what it was is that he actually talked about this in the first season. Mm -hmm. So when Kristen and Eamon were looking for Aegon after Viserys died, he was talking about the shitty thing that Viser that Aegon did for him to get him his virginity yeah so i guess that was the core and, he, and he just keeps going back to that one yeah and, and he has he has this like weird because son mommy, mommy mom, yeah he's got some mommy thing going on with her yeah uh but he you know he's like whatever brother and he, he walks owns, out he owns it he's just yeah like, he oh. owns it and uh he I, I, he kind of throws her under the bus pretty hard too he's like yeah one's as good as another and then walks <laughs> off and she's like god damn dude yeah um, well, she knows she's a who. <laughs> she knows a she's a who. A who? She knows she's a who? Jobs for women. A who? <laughs> a who? All right. Yeah, okay. Uh, the next big sequence here, we'll finish this episode up, is Kristen Cole uh, being chased down. Um, oh, we have something else oh, bigger. Yeah, than yeah. We got, we? we got oh, a bigger scene back. at the very end. Oh, at the very end. Hold on. Did I skip something? Well, well, it, it's no, you're uh, Allison and... Uh, oh, yeah. shit. Oh, that's right. But the Kristen Cole thing happened before. Kristen that. Cole yeah, thing yeah. happens before that. Okay, so he gets... And Vela he, sees them and reports back. Right. And they're like, oh my God, it was a great sequence though. Yes. I love the the action. It was fun yeah. to watch. It was very well done. Uh, the the lighting and CGI was, awesome. was great. And actually, you know what? It was interesting because Dwayne was actually kind of being a dick. To oh, he was Kristen. totally being a dick. But when Kristen got them out of that and he's the one who spotted them, yes. after that, he was kind of like, it actually Dude. made Kristen Cole look a little competent oh, yes. for a few minutes. Yeah. Well, what, what's funny about that scene is, is like, so Kristen Cole is not a strategist. He's not a general. He's not a leader. But what, one thing he's really good at is combat. Mm -hmm. And so like, like, you know, from the moment that we see him in that tourney, he's just a really good soldier. Like, like he mm -hmm. has instincts. And so like when they're out in that field and he looks up and he's like, oh, we're exposed. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're exposed. Like this is cloudy. Like that's just his warrior instincts kicking in. Yeah. And so like, like he is a good fighter. Mm -hmm. Like he he's probably one of the best fighters in the realm at this point. But just one on one, like everything else, he's like very kind of lacking in. Yeah, uh, I, I it was a cool sequence. I really enjoyed it. But well, he was uh, he was pissed off at these guys. Well, they, he they, they, they were just they were just gonna go. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna go stay off. at we're the hotel. Go and, I'm like we're on a fucking covert mission. Yeah. And if we get caught, you're gonna get freaking torched. And, that, and that's funny. And it's actually, that's funny. What he told them, he's like, no ends. Yeah. After that. Yeah. And the, and the dude was like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. We're, <laughs> we're staying off the road. Yeah. We're going yeah, in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It was great. It was a great sequence. I love the back and forth between the two because I I really do not like this freaking high high tower kid. Yeah. So like anytime this kid gets freaking trounced on, I'm all for it. Well, also, so Kristen Cole is a Dornishman, which are kind of looked down upon in Westeros to begin with. Actually, he's from the Stormlands. Well, well but he's Dornish. Right? Like, is he? Okay. Yeah, yeah he, he's Dornish. And uh, so, um, Gwen is kind of like this, you know, like, he, he doesn't have a lot of respect for Kristen Cole until that moment where, yeah. like, where, like, he literally saves the lives of him and his friends. And so he's like, okay, like, you earned a little bit of a stripe there for I me. So. <laughs> well, what's the, the, um, the woman's name who was on the dragon? Remind me. Bela. Bela. I love how she was like, yeah, I got a little lower than normal. Yeah. Like, she's Bayless like, badass. yeah, she's yeah. like, well, she was ordered not to engage. Yeah, yeah. she's like, and just, she didn't. Just like, report. Didn't oh, like, she engaged. <laughs> no, but she's, she was saying she didn't engage. I love yeah. that element of her. She's I pulled like, up. I'm, I pulled I'm, up. Yeah. I'm watching it right now. <laughs> she is definitely engaging. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the thing, the thing, swoop, swoop. and so that, and then yeah. that leads into the next scene. Yes, where we're back to the small council with Rhaenyra, and that freaks all the people out. They're just mm -hmm. like, we gotta do something. Yeah, they're, they're moving. They're moving <laughs> armies. We need to move. I mean, if Bella really wanted to engage, she would have just like had the dragon torch them. Start breathing some fire. Sure. Yeah. Set fire to that wood so like they'd be trapped in there. Oh man, like, woods are dragon proof. <laughs> <laughs> but can you, dude, can you imagine though? I'm, I imagine it in my head as like if she actually got on the ground and like walked her dragon through the woods, oh, how yeah, badass that would have looked. Yeah, would've that awesome. would have been sweet. Uh, okay. Forest, my only weakness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, she could have done like a flame circle around them and then like just, just closed in on them. Just <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, so the meat and potatoes, the big moment on this episode, uh, Rhaenyra gets word that they're moving armies, so she's like, I've got to talk to Allison. I, she she opens up this little letter, and I, try, I paused it like three or four times to try to read what it said. I couldn't really get anything out of it. Well, like all in high Dear book. Allison. No, it was, it was legible. Like, I could read it, but it was like they only opened so I much of it. I miss caressing yeah. your warm bosom at night. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, that's probably Allison saying that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Remember so when we were like, kids and we fooled around? Based off of hey, this letter. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I love exploring my womanhood. I mean, think with about oh it. What do you think Allison and Kristen call each other when they're in the throat? They I don't call know. each other Rhaenyra. <laughs> Based off of this note that for some reason she didn't open until now, she's like, I got to go talk to her because we might be able to salvage this whole situation. <sighs> she talks to the, the Master That's of Whisperers and she's like, how do I get into King's Landing? He's like, oh, the same way everybody fucking does. Just yeah. take a fishing boat. Yeah, do you have a fishing boat. There's no security. <laughs> Don't worry. They didn't just kill the king's son. It's fine. Don't like, my ass. I would call 100% bullshit Pret on pretend this. you're a nun. No big deal. Whatever. Yeah, King's yeah. Landing Septa. is locked. The fuck, fuck is a nun doing on a fishing boat? A septa. <laughs> Like, a soiled set. There should have been so many red flags for anybody at the dock. Like, what is what is happening here? That's a weird white haired freaking septa. Shame. Like, why don't you take the tunnels that you took in order to go hang out with Damon yeah. when you were a kid? Yeah, shouldn't she know? Like, why yeah. is she well, the she, master? She, well, she, she, she did go with one of Missaria's agents. I think that was the thing. Yes, yeah, he was yeah. there with her with yeah. a knife. This whole situation is bullshit, but I it's okay. But the leads, conversation needed to happen. The conversation yeah. needed to happen. So she, she sneaks in. She finds Allison sitting there praying around the, the candle circle, whatever it is. And uh, she's because, like... Because she knew exactly but, when to go with uh, Allison. Because I think that was a big thing. Is like, where do I get her alone? And then she realized, yeah. oh, she goes to the, she goes to the sept. Yeah. That's where I can... And this is the other part that cracked me up when I watched it. Because she's like, put the, cam, put the fat cam on. She's like, yo, hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't, don't move though. I know. I'm not here to hurt you. Wait, I thought that. I thought. I thought but that. Also, I thought, while that is happening, there's a bunch of other nuns right over there, yeah, and yeah. like, like the POV of, huh, huh? That nun is getting handsy with the queen. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just light a candle. I thought, you know what? I thought that it was. Nun, uh, she doesn't look very familiar. <laughs> I thought it was. She knew. I thought it was Allison that had the knife. Maybe I was. No, wrong. it was Rhaenyra. Oh, Rhaenyra. Oh, okay. That's yeah. She weird. straight up like puts a knife to her gut and is like, "Listen, uh, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not here to hurt you, but if you scream, I'm gonna cut your throat." Yeah. But the, <laughs> starting at your stuff. And so, and so, and you, you can go ahead in terms of what. Oh, anyway, so they, mm. they, they have this conversation, and this is like, despite the ridiculousness of the scenario that they it find is. themselves in it and is. how they got there, the conversation is very, very important and it needed to happen, especially for me, because I'm watching this and I'm like, why are they making Allison seem so freaking awesome? Like, all the time, it's always like, Allison's the sweet mom and everything's being no, done wrong. To she's her. a terrible she's mom. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> now finally, this conversation happens where they're like, look, what really happened? What, why did you do this? Like, Aegon was never the guy. Like, you called me. You said I'd be a great queen. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. And what, that how... moment in Rhaenyra's face where she's yeah. like. He said, what? Could No, no, no. When she's when she thinks for a second, could my father have actually changed his mind yeah. in that moment? When she's like, like putting herself in Alicent's shoes yeah. being like, oh. <gasps> Could I have gotten this all wrong? And then when it turns out, Allison did. Allison's like, nope, I didn't do anything wrong. Bye. Oh God, yes. I was just—I wanted to strangle her. Yeah. She's like, we like, yeah, no, the prince that prom that that was promised. And she's like, he's dude, he said what? You said what? How, how, he said those words to uh -huh. you? That's egg on the conqueror. You dweeb, read a book. And then yeah. she's. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing: like we found out in the yeah. end of the season, last season, a, um, Viserys only told. Rhaenyra about he Aegon's never even told Damon. He yeah, never even told Damon. Yeah, that was the only person. But these told. are things that are in books, right? Like you could, you but not could the, no, the, no, 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 not this particular be a prophecy. Because it was the prophecy, the Song of Ice and Fire, right. basically about the coming of the White Walkers. But it's a it's a known song. No, uh, it's not to them. No. How does he know about it? It's because it was song. passed down. From it's who? passed down from king to king. king. So it's passed down from Jaehaerys to him. And like it's like a like a king thing only. It's a prophecy that you tell your heir. So basically, Aegon the Conqueror. Uh, had this vision, and he passed this down to every king that came comes after him, mm -hmm. which is the Song of Ice and Fire, which is what uh, um, Rhaenyra's father told her. Mm -hmm. It's so, kind of like when you become president, and sure, and get the, then, yeah, you, and you then get they to, tell you about what really goes on at Area Fifty One. Exactly, here's your black books. books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's okay. So that makes sense to me. More sense now. Mm -hmm. um, but however, doesn't that doesn't that sweet little girl that's with Stannis Baratheon, his daughter? Doesn't she know all about this shit because she read it in books? No, it, no. It's the, she knows about the Dance of Dragons. Yes. It's not the same all, thing. All, also, the, okay. the Red Woman and, and that sect, um, uh, the R'hllor, um sect. 
the red, yeah, the red, uh, yeah. Uh, the red so, light. so, so, like they believe in the prince that was promised. Mm. So, like somehow between Game of Thrones and and this story, that legend gets out there. Okay, and, and it's still just prophecy. Azora High. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Azora High. Azora High. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I for some reason was under the impression that it was like a. a, a like a fairy tale story that they tell no. that kids just learn about when they're in the yeah. Hot, ready I mean, the, the song of ice and fire basically comes down to Jon Snow, which is the yeah. joint joining of Targaryen and Stark. Ice yes. and fire, and he's the prince. And they that fucked that up, didn't they? Oh, oh yeah, they, <laughs> oh, on, on the show at least they, they fucked that up. Yeah, that was Lucy in the time. football. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so that makes more sense. Way more sense now because I was like, why does she not know about this shit? Mm -hmm. Like, it's I, I always thought that it was just like this thing that like the high the high families know about whatever. Just one family. Um, but just one person. The king mm -hmm. passes it down to his heir. Yada yada yada. Okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that the the legend is actually engraved in that. Valerian steel knife. That, yes, that um, Rhaenyra and uh, Aegon has. Aegon right? has. Aegon's swinging that thing around every day. No, no. no yeah, that's the yeah, knife. Yeah, that's the cat's yeah, claw. Does he have the knife? Yeah, yeah a a cat's claw. Aegon has it, but it, it only reveals itself when it's put into the the fire. Right. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I love the fact that he's carrying he's, that thing around. He has they, no they, idea what it they is. They prominently have showed that knife like at least three times in this single episode. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a big deal. Uh, okay, so this is the moment for me where I was like, oh, Allison's the pure i am like pro team yeah. black you yeah. know what i mean like i want to get one of those uh team black flags for outside of our house <laughs> yes. on a flag yeah i get that i get that <laughs> the, uh, my, my thing was this is that we know this war is going to happen i'm just like let's stop wasting time mm -hmm. you know i i think aside from that this is one thing that has been kind of an issue with this show and it's the fact that I can see, okay, there was an accident here. Maybe there was a coincidence here. But this has happened about four or five times now. And it's just like, can somebody have some fucking intention about something <laughs> they're doing? I think now is the time. Because now, I hope so. Rhaenyra is now like fully, there is no mistake. She is lying. Mm -hmm. She had admitted that she is lying. She knows mm -hmm. she's wrong and she's still going down this path. And you know what? I mean, I, Allison. I, Allison. I, Allison. And, yeah. I, and I honestly wish they just had Allison do that from the beginning. Yeah. Mm. That would have just made made so much more sense and just be like, okay, I'm saying this to you. You would be a great queen, but my son still, I want my son on the throne. Sure. Well, also, so like when Allison, so Allison doesn't fully believe Rhaenyra, but she believes her enough where she just realizes that it's too late. Like, yeah. like she's yeah. lost all sway at court. She, she has no power. And so That's even true. if she yeah. wanted to do something to avoid this, she, uh, can't. she yeah. can't. She's right. It is too late. Yeah. But mm -hmm. also... You fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, up to that point, though, like she truly believed that what she was doing was the wishes of her husband, which yeah. was, was to put like his first son yeah. on the throne. And and now she knows she was wrong. But she's not backing but down. But she can't back down because w like w in what scenario would she be like, yeah, okay, Rhaenyra, you're right. Let me go talk to my king, the son, my, my son, the king, and say, <laughs> hey, you got to give that crown back because I actually made a big boo boo. Like that's never going to happen. No, also, there is no escape, especially like after already, he lost his heir. Yeah, and, and they already crowned him and yeah. everything so in front of a like, lot of people. Like the people are behind him, but also like uh, this is kind of like one of those things that it's like Aegon is hang hanging on to this that his father in his final moment shows him. Yes. He probably didn't give a shit about him no. his entire <laughs> life. So if she were to go back now and be like, yeah. by the way. It's like what, <laughs> what, like what course of action does Allison? <laughs> Oopsies! Like, what course of action does she actually have then? Done. And no, she has, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. She's nothing. Late. She can do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So well, he can. He can. He, I think I guess Aegon could go up there and start stammering a lot and acting old. And I, and I think and I think honestly <laughs> that's why I think that's why this scene kind of pissed me off because like we know this is going to happen at this point. If this had happened before, say, uh, before. Luceris died, then it would have had more impact. But it's just like, okay, dude, we know this is going to happen, dude. Come on, just let them fight. Well, just well, well, <laughs> also, this, this is something that never happened in the books, right. too. No, like, like this. Oh, this is that, all new. That the yes. show kind of like decided to put in there. Oh. Yeah. Also, speaking of which, um, the Helena scene with her mother. It was mm -hmm. very short, where she forgave her. What did she forgive her for? Being a bad mother. For being a bad mother, and Kristen oh, not guarding. Oh yeah. Their uh, her bedroom. Yeah. Because she said, I forgive you, but she didn't say what, but Helene, um, Allison. Allison, I do remember that. That is, yeah, that's an important scene because she was like, yeah, I know that the reason why my son died was because Chris and Cole was with you and not guarding my room. But I forgive you. But it's okay. 
She hasn't gone crazy yet. That's okay. Little, that's a little fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good episode. All right. Though. Yeah, it was a great episode. Um, definitely, I think, better than episode two. Um, I had a lot the more fun with this one. first thing said when we finished watching it was like, that was boring. It was really? Boring. You it was didn't boring. like it? I it was said, boring. Wow, that was a bit of a nothing It was burger. boring. No And way. then Kadish goes, really? I loved it. Yeah. There, were like, good really? parts. there were good parts, but it was overall boring. Hmm. Yeah. I think we're, I mean... By any indication of the trailer for next week, I think we're going to get some action. Sure. I, I, th th this was definitely an episode setting up like all the badass this whole that's about to happen. <laughs> series has been set up so far. <laughs> the entire first yeah. season has been set up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, I am all. How for many episodes good. do we have? It's ten. I actually wait. Wait, this is this season. Is it eight shorter? or ten? I think the season's shorter actually. I don't know. So we're halfway right through. Now? So no, the season it's a mid season. No, no. This, is, no. This, is only season. this is only episode. I thought, no, it, was, episode I thought four. it was 10 episodes. I hope, but it might be. It, I know, but yeah. I'm saying like next episode will be next episode. Next episode is four. It says 20 episodes in the. Um, oh, so then 10, 10, 10 between, okay, good. Oh, between okay, one so and 10. Two. Okay. So, yeah, good. it's got to be 10 episodes. Okay, good, 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 good. So uh, usually mid season is when they ramp stuff up and get everybody mm -hmm. hooked back in oh, again. So either next episode or episode wait, five is going to be. Oh, wait, was going to be bangers. It's eight. Oh, I knew it is next episode. Because they already got approved for season three. It is next episode. That's right. That's right. So next episode is going to be the midpoint of the season. They're going to have a big battle. There's going to be dragons and fire and all kinds of crazy stuff. Get everybody all amped up. Next episode is called The Dance of Dragons. Nice. This is the first time dragons are going to be fighting dragons. Yeah, man. Let's go. I'm ready for it. We'll say nothing. I'm having a blast. Not die? No, 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 no. That's ways out. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the first Riverlands. This is well. I'm I'm with this guy. I don't know shit. So let's let's just say I'm just along for the ride. There's going to be there will be dragons fighting dragons. Sweet, cool. And it's going to be a very brutal dance. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, that's it for the podcast. We had a lot of fun talking about this episode. There's a lot to cover, so we went a little long, but um, I had a blast with this one. This was a really fun episode for me. Uh, the, the, again, the cinematography and the way things are filmed, the Heron Hall amazing. scene. Yes. Everything with Damon was freaking rad. Uh, the maneuvering is happening. The pieces are set up. I'm just waiting for that big moment. We've had a lot of chess now. I want to see yeah. some action. Yep, so time for some good. action. All right, that's it. Uh, any final thoughts besides that? We're good across the table. Good. Cool. Great. Tune in next week. Uh, well, there's, there's camera. Uh, tune in next week, guys. We'll be here. Uh, we'll be breaking down everything that happens episode by episode. So if, you, uh, if you're a fan of Hot D, if you're a fan <laughs> of House of the Dragons, share this podcast with your friends. Uh, I, I love to have that, that community building around episodes week to week. This is my preferred model uh, for TV. So let's take advantage of it and have some fun. Comment below your favorite moments, your speculations, and your theories. We'll see you next week. Stay salty. Hey guys, if you like this video and you want to watch another one, click right here.